the new towns of Dubai. Desert farms and floating cities, even colonies in space. But you know, this isn't exactly the first time anyone's tried to make this movie. People have been dreaming about the future for centuries. Hey everyone, my name is David Dunbar, or the Theme Park Evangelist. Oh, there's a cat behind me. <laughs> it was actually on the ground to begin with. Well, as you just saw in that first one minute and a half introduction, that was the very beginning of a ride at Epcot called Horizons, uh, now known as Mission Space. So, today... On my Rise and Fall YouTube series on another defunct Disney World attraction, we're going to be talking about the Rise and Fall of Horizons. What happened to it? Well, Horizons was an older Disney World attraction that used to exist back in the late 80s, early 90s at Epcot, and eventually was torn down around the mid 2000s about 2005 maybe later on i don't remember offhand i i would have to look that up give me one second and i will actually look it up for you guys. okay i just looked it up so it opened in early 2003 so almost 20 years ago so that means that horizons uh must have closed about 2001 2002 somewhere around there if I'm not mistaken, I mean, I'm not going to look that up because obviously Horizons was an older dark ride that, and also a slow moving ride that took you through what Disney World believed at the time to be the 21st century. And they uh, eventually decided, well, we want to move on to having more thrill rides because they already had Test Track, which was already way more popular. So they eventually replaced it with Mission Space to stay on with the uh, thrill ride, so to speak. So I don't have a lot of time. I got about 15 more minutes, and then I actually have to go take her some recycling, and then I'm going to meet up with a close friend of mine from the Ark, uh, Caitlin. But... Anyway, um, with the uh, short amount of time I do have, I might as well just go ahead and just get it right into it. So, Horizons was really interesting. So, the uh, very first part of it basically just kind of showed you what it was like to live in the 21st century. I mean, Disney only had a rough idea of what the 21st century was going to be like, even when the Carousel of Progress... Uh, first came out the 21st century scene was so cool for a long time because we only had a rough idea of what the 21st century was going to look like versus these days even the carousel of progress when you get to the 21st century scene a lot of that stuff that disney had imagined we either have or has been around for quite some time now and a lot of people don't actually own, like, VR stuff in their houses. And the VR that they are using in the Carousel of Progress, for example, is got very cheap graphics. Uh, these days, we have HD. Don't get me wrong. Disney did not realize how far and how fast we were going to advance in technology. When they designed that, it's kind of the same thing with Horizons. Disney only had a rough idea of what technology was going to be like when they uh, first designed the ride back when Epcot first opened. Back when Epcot used to be Epcot Center, for that matter. Actually, the video I was showing you guys was done back in 1992, but it was uploaded to YouTube in 2014. So that's like a long time after the ride had already been closed. As crazy as that is, but I'm sure you could tell by the video, it screamed out 90s. I mean, that video was literally shot a little over a year before I was even born. So, yes, I did get to ride the ride quite a few times while I was still alive. The 
ride itself closed just before I turned 10 years old. So I was probably about nine years old when the ride closed down, maybe eight or so. But regardless, you guys know that I have been around for at least a little while when the ride first closed down. Imagine somebody who was born in the early 2000s, they wouldn't probably even have read the, read the ride. I was very blessed that I actually did get to gra grow up with the ride a little bit. The uh, very end of the ride was actually really interesting because they let you pick three different ways you want to end the ride. I think it was like space, sea, and then like lava or something like that. And they had a, like an interactive display and you could pick and choose and see like how you wanted to end the ride. I don't honestly remember the reason for it, but I... Uh, Thought that was really cool how they did that. So, more or less, why did it only last for so long? Because of the fact that Epcot was only really a park that was geared towards comrades and how, like, let's just put it this way. When Epcot was first opened, this was after Walt Disney had passed away. Future World was primarily dedicated towards how communication has changed over time. And then you had World Showcase, which is basically dedicated. I really don't see how it's going to change anytime soon, but we'll see what happens. World Showcase was dedicated to how all the different countries are very different in their culture and how they do things and you can like see it in the architecture you can see it in their food you can see it in the way they talk the way they dress so i personally like world showcase the best a lot of people do and that's also why i'm a huge fan of the food and wine festival as well as the flower and garden festival the uh, Food and Wine Festival has gotten so popular that it actually starts in the midsummer now. I still like it back in the day when it would start right after Labor Day weekend or right before Labor Day weekend. And it would go all the way till mid-November, so right after my birthday. And then that gave Disney a couple of weeks to get ready for their Christmas program over at Epcot called Holidays Around the World. And to the best of my knowledge, they're still doing that one. And then Future World, well, they always had some kind of ride that it was dedicated towards teaching people about how communication has changed or their rides were more educational back then. Uh, for example, uh, the, um, whatever you call it, the Wonders of Life Pavilion, that's right, didn't necessarily have anything to do with how communication has changed, but I did teach kids and people for that matter about how to take care of your body. I also taught people about how adolescence is a real thing and what it's like to deal with it. Spaceship Earth has always been about how communication has changed. Test Track used to be about how different environments that a car can go through can impact the way a um, car performs or handles and, and performs. And then later on, Disney has decided, well, we don't want people to really come here to learn anymore. We just want people to come here and have fun. So that's why they did away with that. And that's why they went more towards a creative environment where kids and just people of all ages could literally design a ride vehicle virtually and then get to go battle it out against other people. And then you got Horizons, which taught people about what it's what it would be like to live in the 21st century. Then they decide, well, that's not good enough anymore. Let's allow people to hop on a rocket and either fly around the Earth or uh, go to Mars and back. Well, originally that's how Mission Space started. Believe it or not. If you guys don't uh, remember it, I'll tell you right now. When Mission Space first opened back in early 2003, 
the primary sole purpose of mission space was for people to board a rocket, see what it'd be like to go to Mars and back, and you literally felt like you were going to outer space because they would spin you up to 60 miles per hour. I've been on that version of it. The I did a YouTube video of it, actually. And I will actually stick that in the uh, video. I want you guys to see it. It's basically my uh, first reaction to riding on Mission Space. And I'll tell you right now, I could not even move or even speak during the uh, rocket launch. There was so much G-Force pushed against my face. And... The problem with that original version was a lot of people were ignoring the health and safety warnings posted throughout the entire queue. And people were getting on the ride with health or like prior existing health warm conditions or whatever prior to getting on the ride. And when they got on the ride, unfortunately, the ride was so bad or so hard on their bodies that unfortunately it killed them and then a lot of people are turning around and saying oh it's all disney's fault you know how dare you make such a ride that will kill me or kill my family member or my friend so disney started getting sued left right and center well disney could only afford to do all this for so long so disney went back to the uh creative side of it or they had their imagineers go back to the drawing book and they're like, okay, what do we do? And they uh, came up with the idea of making a tamer version. So that's why you now have an orange side and a green side, or the green team and the orange team. And that's why they literally make you hold on to a safety placard until you get to the uh, video where they te and tell you what the ride is going to be like and basically what they're what you're expecting disney's basically saying at this point we are literally shoving it down your throat the entire queue line even up until you get on the uh, to the video what you're about to experience so you cannot sue us anymore we're not dealing with that anymore uh-uh so when you get on the green team i'll tell you right now it's like star tours but tamer and then you got the orange team, which, of course, is, like, ridiculously intense because it's got the spinning and everything. And, yes, there is a night and day difference. I, I like Mission Space as long as I handle the green team or the go on the green team. Because it gets its moments where I get a little queasy, but it's actually not that bad. I might get off of it after about five minutes. I'll be fine, but... Not even just fine. I'll be excellent again. I'll be like, oh, I need a little bit. But afterwards, I'm like, oh, I'm good. But uh, if you see the uh, video that I'm going to post at the end of this of me riding after I ride the uh, green team. Because if I remember correctly, I videotaped going through the green team. And then I decide, I'm going to go ride orange team too. He was like, uh, okay, if you're sure. <laughs> and I'm literally like, oh, I'm fine. And meanwhile, I'm sweating bullets. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah sometimes i wonder about that so that was almost five years sorry four years ago since i rode mission space for the very first time the last disney ride that i had never ridden in my life that i finally got around to riding and believe it or not i still have not rode astro orbiter yet and i'm too scared to do it <laughs> <laughs> it's just because of the fact that you're dangling over uh like a two-story, maybe higher up. I don't mind heights. It just depends on how you define being afraid of heights. If I'm strapped into a secure thing, and I mean like a lap restraint that cannot come out, oh yeah, I'm fine. I, I have no problem with heights. If I'm leaning over something, I'm scared. If I'm just in a rocket that's like flying over something that's way up in the air and all I have is a seatbelt. Yeah, I'm a little scared. <laughs> so, yes, I do have my moments when I do get scared of heights. Oh, I can't exactly say I'm not afraid of heights, but I just... It just depends on where I'm at. But, yes, Mission Space was the most 
recent Disney ride that I had never ridden before that I finally got on. But it is sad that Disney had decided that calm, dark, educational rides were not enough anymore to please their guests. And that's why they decided we're going to stick towards these thrill rides to appease our guests from this point forward. It is what it is. But let us never forget Horizons. It was a great ride. I thoroughly enjoyed the years that I did get to ride it. And I don't know if you guys are aware, but there are Facebook groups out there that exist where people are like literally saying like bring back this bring back this like bring back jaws bring back 20,000 legs bring back disney quest so if you ever like want to look that up sometime i would highly recommend it now i don't have a lot of time so i'm not gonna upload this to youtube until possibly tonight in my room so i'm at least doing the filming portion now so by the time you see this video up on YouTube, it'll be later tonight that I get it uploaded, but I actually have filmed this earlier in the day. But until then, I actually have to head out. I got one minute, so I will see you guys in the next vlog. And always remember, you can do all things through Crisis Strength with you. Have a great day. Peace out.